In this video, you'll learn all about the key German structure, um zu. Firstly, let's look at what this video will cover. I'll explain the importance of the phrase. We'll undertake a comparison with the English. I'll teach you about inverting the clauses, which includes some beginner example sentences. And then we'll look at stacks of example sentences at the intermediate level, at the advanced level, and also with separable verbs, which is a bit trickier than with normal verbs. And finally, I'll give you a chance to do some practice translation. After the initial explanation, you might like to skip right to the end to do the practice translation by yourself. First, the importance of the phrase. Think about in English how many times you use phrases like this. In order to, to, for the purpose of, or so as to. All of those phrases have something in common. They express the why. When you want to talk about the purpose for why you or someone else is doing something, you use these phrases. And this video will explain to you the one key German phrase that you need in order to express that same idea. Let's do a comparison with the English. So we'll start with a simple German sentence. Ich gehe zum Strand, um zu schwimmen. And this means I'm going to the beach in order to swim. Now I've put the in order in brackets because you don't have to have it. You could just say to swim, which also expresses purpose. Let's look at what this English sentence consists of. We have two main parts. The main clause, I'm going to the beach, and that's the main action of the sentence. You need that for the sentence to make sense. But then there's another clause, which is in this case a purpose clause in order to swim. And that's expressing the purpose of the main clause. And notice how easy it is in English to do this. Main clause followed by purpose clause. And just make sure that in the purpose clause, the verb is in the infinitive. To plus the infinitive. That is the base form of the verb swim. Obviously, if you used a phrase like for the purpose of, then you would have to have the verb in a different form. For the purpose of swimming. But after to, you're always going to have the base form of the verb. Now let's look at the German. In the German, we have the main clause too at the start, but notice that at the end of the main clause in German, there's a comma. And commas in German don't just express when you're taking a breath like they do in English. They express the end of a clause, the end of an idea or a set of ideas, and often when you're changing the subject or changing to a subordinate clause. And then we have the purpose clause, um zu schwimmen. The verb, like in English, schwimmen is in the infinitive form the base form of the verb en, like normal in German. And then there are two other words, um and zu. And that's as simple as it is. In English, you can just have the word to, but in German, you need to have the two words, um, zu. And they are next to each other, but actually they don't belong next to each other. The um belongs at the beginning of the purpose clause, and the zu belongs just before the infinitive verb. So let's look at another example to see how that works. Ich gehe zum Strand, um mit meinen Freunden zu schwimmen. I'm going to the beach in order to swim with my friends. So we've added the information with my friends to this second example. And in English, well, we have the main clause, I'm going to the beach. And then the purpose clause, in order to swim with my friends. We've just added the extra information after the verb in English. The with my friends goes after swim. Notice that the German is a bit different. In German, we have the main clause, the same one as the previous example, ich gehe zum Strand. And once again, we have a comma at the end of the main clause to separate the clauses. Then we have a purpose clause, um mit meinen Freunden zu schwimmen. As always, with an um zu clause, and indeed with a regular zu clause without the um, the verb is going to go at the end of the clause in its infinitive form. So that's different to English. But notice what else is different. The um is at the start of the clause, straight after the comma, and the zu is right before the infinitive or the base form of the verb. And that's because the um belongs at the beginning of the purpose clause and the zu belongs just before the verb. All the other information in the sentence is going to be packed between those two words. So mit meinen Freunden, in this case, is packed between the um and the zu, but there could be more information as well, and we'll see that in other examples. Before we look at lots of examples, I want to teach you about inverting the clauses. So instead of putting the main clause first, we could put the purpose clause first. In order to swim, I go to the beach. Purpose clause followed by main clause. And we can do the same thing in German. And that means we're inverting the clauses. We're swapping them around, changing the order of the clauses. 
and have a look what happens. Um zu schwimmen gehe ich zum Strand. Now the purpose clause is exactly the same. Um zu is there, followed by the infinitive at the end, and there's no other information to go in between the um zu. But look at the main clause, it's changed. Gehe ich zum Strand. The verb, did you notice, gehe is at the start of the main clause. That wasn't the case when the main clause was first. What's happened here? In German, in a main clause which comes after a comma, the verb is the first word. And this is seen in the verb, comma, verb rule, where you have a subordinate clause with a, verb, with a conjugated verb at the end, comma, and then another conjugated verb at the beginning of the coordinating clause. But you don't have to worry about all of that. Just remember, um zu schwimmen is the first idea in the sentence, and gehe is the second idea, and verbs are always the second idea in a German sentence. Let's look at the second example, inverted. In order to swim with my friends, I go to the beach. Purpose clause first followed by main clause. In English, we often do have that comma between the purpose clause and the main clause to pause just so that we know that we're changing clauses. But in German, it's compulsory. Um mit meinen Freunden zu schwimmen, gehe ich zum Strand. Purpose clause first, um at the start, zu just before the verb at the end, and all the other information in between the um and the zu. And then the main clause, gehe ich zum Strand, starting with the gehe, because the main clause is not the first one. Let's look at some example sentences at an intermediate level. And with these examples, I want to challenge you to see if you can translate them from German into English. You might like to pause the video to see if you can do that, even using a dictionary to look up some of the more obscure words. Er ist schon alt genug, um das zu verstehen. He is already old enough to understand that. Often the um zu clause will go with a word like genug, enough, because it's expressing quantity. You have enough of something in order to do something else. And in this case, he's old enough in order to do something else, to understand something. In the purpose clause, we have um at the start, zu as the second last word, and das is the only other word that we need, which is sandwiched in between the um and the zu. Viele Leute gehen jetzt joggen, um etwas für ihre Gesundheit zu tun. Lots of people go jogging to do something for their health. This time we've got a bit more between the um at the start of the purpose clause and the zu as the second last word before the verb tun but they're still in those positions. And when you're listening to German or reading German, you're going to have to hang out to see if the zu is coming. Often you'll be able to predict it if you're used to seeing it. Ich kann mich morgen frei machen, um dich zu treffen. I can get off work tomorrow to meet you. So the purpose clause, um dich zu treffen, involves the um at the start, the zu is the second last word, and the word for you in the accusative form, dich, in between. Er hat um 7 Uhr das Haus verlassen, um zur Arbeit zu gehen. He left the house at 7 o'clock in order to go to work. This time the main clause is in the past tense, and it doesn't matter what tense the main clause is in. It could be past, present, future, whatever. The purpose clause can still be used and it is sort of without a tense because there's no conjugated verb. The um is at the start and the zu is before the final verb. Gehen. Er ist zu feig, um seine Meinung offen zu sagen. He is too cowardly to speak his mind openly. This time the purpose clause is longer than the main clause. And again, you've got this idea of quantity. There is too much of his cowardly nature in order to do the action of the purpose clause, which is speak his mind openly. The um is at the start of the purpose clause and the zu is right before the verb at the end. Sie ist nach draußen gegangen, um frische Luft zu schnappen. She went outside to get some fresh air. Again, we have past tense in the main clause, but the tenseless purpose clause starts with um and finishes with zu plus, the verb in its infinitive form. Let's look at some example sentences at an advanced level. Die Jugendlichen belagerten den Popstar, um ein Autogramm zu bekommen. The youth mobbed the Popstar in order to get an autograph. The purpose clause is clear because it comes after the comma and starts with um, followed by zu before the infinitive at the end. Wir haben jahrelang gespart, um uns ein neues Auto kaufen zu können. We saved for years in order to be able to buy a new car. This example is interesting because it has two verbs in its purpose clause, kaufen, to buy, and können, to be able to. So which one comes last? Well, it's simply the first verb in terms of ideas. So to be able to is clearly the first verb. It controls the idea of buying. 
And so that goes right at the end. And su follows our rule by preceding that verb directly. And then we have our second verb just before the su. If we had more than two verbs, then we'd put the third verb just before the kaufen. And the um is, of course, at the beginning of the purpose clause. Ihm fehlte das Geld, um sich ein neues Auto zu kaufen. He lacked the money to buy a new car. Here again is this idea of quantity or lack of quantity, which is so common with um zu clauses. We have an um at the start of the purpose clause and the zu right before the infinitive at the end. Die Lampe ist zu schwach, um das Zimmer richtig zu erhellen. The lamp is too weak to illuminate the room properly. The purpose clause is second, separated by a comma. The um is at the start and the zu is at the end before the verb. Er trat ins Freie, um die Sterne zu beobachten. He stepped outside to watch the stars. The main clause is in the past tense, with the simple past, in fact, the simple past of treten, and the purpose clause starts with um and ends with zu plus the infinitive. And finally, er hielt im Reden inne, um zu warten, bis die Zuhörer wieder ruhig waren. He paused in speaking to wait until the audience was quiet again. Now, this example is interesting because the purpose clause is not the last clause. There are, in fact, three clauses here. Now, this purpose clause is extremely short. To wait, in order to wait, or in German, um zu warten. That's it. There's no more information to put in between the um and the zu. But in fact, there is more information which is contained in this third clause until the audience was quiet again. Bis die Zuhörer wieder ruhig waren. And because it's a whole other clause with another verb and subject and so on, it's going to be separated by a comma after the purpose clause so that it's clearly reliant on the purpose clause. And that's why the umzuwarten is in the middle there. Now let's look at some example sentences with separable verbs and see what happens differently in these examples. Er hat nicht genug Disziplin, um sein Studium durchzuhalten. He does not have enough discipline to persevere with his studies. So the purpose clause looks quite normal, starting with an um, but the zu is in a strange location, isn't it? It's right in the middle of the verb, in its infinitive form at the end of the sentence. Why is it in the middle of the verb and not before the verb? Well, that's because this is a separable verb, durchhalten. Deutsch is the separable prefix that is often detached from the verb, and halten is that base of the verb, which can have numerous different prefixes to make it mean something different. And just like in the past tense, where the GE will go in between the separable prefix and the base verb, here, where there's a zu, the zu will go in between. Ich brauchte zwei Wochen, um mich in die schwierige Materie einzulesen. It took me two weeks to read up on the difficult material. We have our purpose clause starting with um, and then zu, of course, is not before the verb, but rather in the middle of that separable verb einlesen, to read up on. Auf halbem Weg zum Gipfel machen wir Halt, um uns auszuruhen. Halfway to the summit, we are stopping to rest. It's a very short purpose clause, but there are two things which are worth noting about it. Um starts the purpose clause as we would expect, but the zu is in the middle of the verb because it's a separable verb, ausruhen. But it's also a reflexive verb, which is why you have an uns there. You have to say, rest myself out or rest ourselves out. Er war einfach zu müde, um noch wegzugehen. He was simply too tired to go out anymore. The um starts the purpose clause and the zu is inserted after the separable prefix within the verb in its infinitive form. Dieses Jahr fehlt uns das Geld, um wegzufahren. This year we lack the money to go away. Again, a very short purpose clause here. There are no additional details to put between the um and the zu. It's just that the weg is a separable prefix and so that will have to go before the zu but as part of the verb. Finally, let's do some practice translation with some sentences from English to German at an easier level. And I encourage you to pause the video after each sentence in English appears to try to translate it into German and then to compare your translation with the correct translation that I give. Number one, I play soccer in order to keep fit. Ich spiele Fußball, um fit zu bleiben. Number two. You need a hundred points in order to win. Du brauchst hundert Punkte, um zu gewinnen. Number three. I read novels in order to relax. 
Ich lese Romane, um mich zu entspannen. Number four. She was too tired to get up. Sie war zu müde, um aufzustehen. And number five. In order to stay healthy, I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. Um gesund zu bleiben, esse ich viel Obst und Gemüse.